Sirius and Procyon are two close-by systems. Both contain a large bright star and orbit around a much smaller, yet still massive white dwarf companion. These two systems light up our night sky and are a wonder to behold, but what would they have looked like if their now dim white dwarf companions were in the prime of their main sequence lives? Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we continue our Brightest Star series, returning to take a glimpse at how the Alpha Canis Majoris and Alpha Canis Minoris stars might once have appeared. So let's get to it. Sirius B is a white dwarf star and the companion to the brighter Sirius A, forming the binary star system known as Alpha Canis Majoris. Despite its tiny size, Sirius B is still the fifth heaviest star within 20 light years and is even heavier than our own sun. The exact details of the progenitor star that gave rise to it are unknown with any certainty, but it's estimated it had a mass of approximately 5 to 8 times that of the Sun. This would have made it likely a hot blue B-class star, much in the mould of the Lion King of Regulus, or perhaps more likely Alnair, also known as Alpha Gruis, with a classification of somewhere in the middle of the B-class main sequence, B3 to B6 let's say or perhaps even as prominent as the weirdly egg-shaped star of Achenar. Sirius B would have had a relatively short lifetime, and probably only a few tens of millions of years, due to the high rate of nuclear fuel consumption. The progenitor star likely followed a similar evolutionary path to other massive B-class stars of its kind, starting its life as a hot massive blue-tinged star, fusing hydrogen into helium. As that fuel depleted, the star would have expanded into a red giant phase, burning helium at its core and undergoing several stages of nuclear burning, including indeed the fusion of heavier elements, including carbon and oxygen. Eventually Sirius B exhausted its nuclear fuel and shed its outer layers. The exact format though of how it did this is unclear. It could have been in a spectacular expulsion or even a supernova. It's thought that stars with five or more solar masses can go supernova, so Sirius B would likely have fit into, or indeed was on the very edge of this category. Either way, this explosive event would have dispersed the outer layers into space, leaving behind the dense core that we see today. The exact details that created Sirius B's white dwarf are challenging to directly observe, of course, or study the system because it's long since moved on from its position in space at the time. However, astronomers have been able to estimate the age of the Sirius binary system, and it's believed that the progenitor star of Sirius B went through the supernova explosion and transformed into a white dwarf approximately 120 to as many as 150 million years ago. Often overlooked because of the Sirius system, the Procyon system is extremely similar, with a large F-class yellow-white star of Procyon A and a much fainter companion of the white dwarf of Procyon B. Procyon B though is substantially less massive than Sirius B at 0.6 solar masses. It does still remain one of the heaviest stars in our local area, but not on the higher rankings as we see here. Again, the specific characteristics of the progenitor star that led to the formation of Procyon B are not definitively known. Unlike Sirius B, Procyon B is thought to have originated from a main sequence star that could have once been more similar to our Sun, or perhaps a little more likely, slightly more massive. Speculation says that it possibly had a mass in the range of 1.5 to 2 times that of the Sun, so it would be something very similar to the Sirius A star now, Altair, or indeed Vega, and likely an A-class main sequence star. Now this asks an intriguing question. Given that stars like our Sun or Alpha Centauri A last much longer than stars like Sirius or Vega, how come the star even exists so early in its life cycle? Well the thing with Procyon is that it's 1.7 billion years old, it's still older than Sirius, and indeed old enough that Procyon A is thought to be predominantly fusing helium at this point in its life cycle and moving away from the main sequence, swelling into a red giant probably within the next 10 to 100 million years. So ironically, much like the current trajectory of A-class stars like Sirius, Altair or Vega, the progenitor star of Procyon B likely expanded into a red giant not very long ago in astronomical terms, and at most 500 to 700 million years ago. This is based on the fact that the typical A-class stars tend to live around 1 billion years. As the progenitor star exhausted its core hydrogen, the outer layers would have expanded and caused the star to become larger and cooler. Eventually, just like Sirius B, it would have shed its outer layers, leaving behind a dense core, but this time in a much less explosive way, and left behind indeed the white dwarf we now observe as Procyon B. 
The process by which these outer layers are expelled is still not fully understood to this day, but it's believed to involve stellar winds and mass loss mechanisms. In today's graphic, we take a look at the current night sky and imagine that both Sirius B and Procyon B were still in the prime of their lives. First of all, Sirius, at 8.61 light years away, suddenly begins to brighten. The stars themselves independently would shine. Sirius A would obviously remain at minus 1.46 apparent magnitudes, but this time, Sirius B, assuming a roughly average star for its class, would have 3,500 solar luminosities and would therefore approach a luminosity of a quite astonishingly bright minus 7 apparent magnitudes. Even when the two stars were added together, which is of course what we would see, the brightness of Sirius B would still dwarf Sirius A so much that Sirius A's light would become negligible. The Sirius system would evenly massively outshine Venus by as many as 16 times and shine all day and night, a star of a class we've not seen in our solar system for many, many millions of years. Indeed, since the last B-class main sequence star, Adara, passed us by for a visit. Not to be completely outdone, however, we now turn our eyes to Procyon, further north in our skies. The seventh brightest star in our night sky, Procyon currently shines at plus 0.34 apparent magnitudes. But if the Procyon B star was suddenly to appear in the prime of its life, it would much resemble the luminosity of the star of Vega at present. But this time, it would be 11 light years from Earth and not the 25 that Vega currently finds itself at. Procyon B at 11 light years would shine brightly at minus 1.61 apparent magnitudes and would replace the original Sirius A star to become the brightest star in our night sky, or indeed in this graphic, the second brightest if we're counting the new Sirius B star. So Procyon B would not shine in the same category as Sirius B, and not even close by a long shot, but it would still be an astonishing achievement nonetheless. Both the Sirius and Procyon systems contain a large bright star that has a small white dwarf in orbit. Once upon a time, however, those stars were themselves mighty powerhouses that held their own in skies in their local areas for many, many millions of years. If those stars suddenly were to suddenly reignite their old flames, they would instantly become the brightest stars in our night skies. Indeed, if the larger white dwarf of the two, Sirius B, were to restore to its former glory, it would be so bright in our skies that we would almost be able to read a book by it. Let's celebrate these wonderful star systems while they're around, until eventually they disappear back into our galaxy and indeed fade from our imaginations. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life on the channel, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and maybe your idea next week could show up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.